new classes will be offered for high school students for the 2017-2018 school year. Find out how a student's smartphone will help them advance in fine arts. Plus, stipend requests and budget updates at the latest school committee and town council meetings. And later, we sit down with Yale resident and local author, Christina Us. Learn to write from one of the best at the library's upcoming Writers Group Workshop. Those stories and much more ahead on LCAT News Update. Thanks for tuning in to LCAT News Update. I'm Rebecca Green. We begin the show with our weekly meeting recap. We cover school committee, town council, and board of assessors. First, the high school administration team presents new courses for the 2017 school year. The new course additions will be in areas of fine arts, business, and foreign language. High school principal Gina Flanagan covers fine arts and how technology is a key factor for these new courses. One of the things our art teachers are looking to really take advantage of um, in the coming years is the development of digital art. And one of the courses that they are um, proposing to you tonight I think is super exciting. It is the use of smartphone photography. And so as you can see here, students will um, learn to use the technology that's already embedded on their smartphones as well as applications that are available to them using the smartphone to um, create all different types of pieces of art. So they'll learn editing techniques. Um, there'll be a lot of collaboration with sharing of their artwork. So I think that'll be a fun class for students who are looking for something different. And we're always looking to diversify, especially in the fine arts, some of the, the things that we offer students. That will be a semester-based course. All right, and then the digital art class, again, kind of following suit to, to the digital age of, of art, um, they're going to be using a lot of the Google Drawing Suite application, <coughs> as well as some other computer-based techniques that are available to our students, uh, web-based as well as maybe perhaps some software that they want to embed as well. And so as you can see here, um, not only will students be able to utilize those different types of medias, but they will also work on learning about the movements that are related to digital art as well, create self-portraits, collages, and and um, other digital paintings and that is offered to all students grades 9 through 12 and that is a semester-based course. Next, Assistant Principal Frank Page summarizes foreign language editions. So right now we do offer uh, Spanish 4 honors, we offer Spanish 5 honors, uh, going right into the AP, uh, but um, ru running and giving the option of a Spanish 4 standard level class uh, gives an opportunity to a student who starts taking Spanish as a freshman at the standard level to, uh, if they choose, um, take four years of, uh, of a foreign language uh, throughout their high school career. By offering this course, there will no longer be that gap if the kid did choose to make that jump on to the next level. Yeah. So the next offering, um, Latin Two Honors, that's a full year course as well. Right now we do offer a, uh, a Latin Two standard level course. Um, if you look at our other foreign languages, if you look at French, if you look at Spanish, uh, all the, the entry level courses for that class, whether it's uh, Latin, Spanish, or French, start at a standard level. But when they get to the second level of that class, Spanish 2, Spanish, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Spanish 2, French 2, they have the option of going to either honors or standard. Um, right now, Latin is the only one where we don't offer an honors level, um, I'm sorry, an honors level Latin 2 course. So uh, we're just looking to give that student who is taking the uh, Latin track to um, choose between standard and honors um, in their second year of that course. Ending the presentation, Assistant Principal Robert Marhafka announces that the school will be offering a drum lab as an elective for performing arts. Actually, really exciting. Mr. Kieran's really excited about, about this option. Drum lab. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, and, and when he first brought it up, it was kind of like, it was my, my first question with that was, how many drums do we have to buy? And he's like, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry about it. We're going to bang out a lot of things. I'm like, oh, and, 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 and when he explained it to us, I mean, it really does sound exciting because you already have, you know, all your art ones are, are, are completely full. Uh, we are running multiple sections of History of Rock and Roll, which, you know, um, we really just have a lot of kids taking that right now. I know there's one section in the, uh, in the auditorium, and this just gives enough, um, all of our students another opportunity to meet that, that requirement, but in a more active and, for some of our students, in a more engaging kind of, kind of way. Also at that meeting, the committee votes to increase their stipend. I think that we do deserve more money, but I think I'd like to do it progressively. Okay. Just, just a thought. I mean, we, yeah. we've, done, we've been very fine, well, very responsible. But to that point, right, the discussion always comes up. When was the last time there was an increase, right? We don't and so to say, 
progressively yeah. um, then says to whomever is on the council in two years, well, we just had, well, you just did it two years ago, versus right. when, when, when right. was it happened last? How long have we been? We don't know. Time? Yeah, we don't know. We can't Ten find over 10, 10 years. years. Well, it's, it's a lot longer than that because Pam looked at mine and I've been, you know, yeah. for 12. Right. And I know there was nothing before. So it's been a long time. It's been, yeah. it's been a long I'm time. not necessarily in agreement right. with the progressive. If we're going to, you can always, you can always look at it again, let's say in three to five years or our successors can look at it. If we decide that we, we want it, because with the government change and everything, I think this is the time to do it, if we're going to do it. Well, so we had thrown off the figure 3,000. We had started with that, so. It was well, look, it's 3,500. Right, well, what if we do the Ludlow and then another five for the chair? 35 for the chair and 3,000? No, 35 and four. Mm -hmm. 35 and four? Right. Make a motion to um, increase our stipend to the figure of 3500 for the four regular members and 4000 for the chair. Should we specify when for the fiscal year? Effective. <coughs> Effective July 1st of 2017. Fiscal year 2018. And included in, within our budget. Yes. Yep. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Speaking of stipend, the Town Council also reviewed the annual pay at the January 10th meeting. So at this point, the strategy that this Council seems to have adopted is to wait until um, it becomes part of the budget process, which was my request in the first place, at which time it will become subject to the public hearing and it will be a matter that can be discussed as part of the regular budget process because we're not going to receive any actual stipend or payment until after that process is through um, based on the strategy that's been recently discussed by the council. So at this point, I would suggest we take no action, uh, continue with the budget development of which the stipends will be part of that. The residents will have an opportunity to debate that uh, in, uh, or not debate, but comment on that during the um, public hearing um, portion of the, uh, the budget presentation. Um, at which time, if uh, based upon that information, the council wishes to reconsider its vote, we can do it then. The meeting moves on to the town manager's report, where Denise Menard talks capital budget plans. Uh, we're moving forward with the capital plan for fiscal year ending 2018. In addition to partnering with the town accountant for, for the capital budget, I've also asked Tom O'Connor and Ryan Quinby, who have participated in the past, um, to assist with uh, reviewing the plan. They can give history that I wouldn't know, and actually Sarah's only been uh, here a couple of years, so she really has only done a couple of budgets as well. The process is going forward. We're um, to the point of, of uh, sort of rating the projects, and we should have some capital plan pretty well set pretty soon. At some point, this town is going to be facing the decision to build um, whether it's a new high school uh, or renovate the existing facility or the middle schools or a town hall or at some point all of these issues uh, there are the, the reality is at some point we need to invest in our infrastructure I, I think that's one of the things that we should be cognizant of if we as we enter the, the uh, this budget process now and in the future um, I'd like to see us I think it's incumbent upon us to put us ourselves in the best possible financial shape to be able to manage such capital expenditures without an enormous tax increase on our residents. Um, I think with good planning, we can put ourselves in that position. And uh, so it's only something I throw out for your thought process as we enter the budget season. So. Not also covers general updates from new hires to department achievements and more. I'm, uh, I've set up the interviews for the HR director. They're scheduled for Friday. We have two viable candidates. We didn't get a lot of candidates, but uh, we have two that uh, appear to be good, a good fit for the town. And I've asked the Longmeadow and the Ludlow HR directors to uh, participate in the, the interview process. They know HR. I think I know a little bit about it, but they know it much better. So. I've gotten some um, interview questions together, and it should be a, a good process for Friday, and I'm hoping we get somebody in in February. That'll be great. Since I reported on the problem that we were having with trash collection in mid-December, I thought I'd report that the complaints, one, the complaints have stopped, and two, back in, I think it was October, 
uh, we had had discussions about they were going, going to be redividing the routes. Um, I didn't connect the two. The, the redividing of the routes was the root of the problem that we were having uh, in December. Um, some streets were um, overfilling the trash by the end of the day, and um, so that's why they couldn't pick up more trash. And then other routes had some space to spare. So in January, they will be um, starting new routes. A uh, couple, uh, some some streets have been shifted to a different day. They've been notified uh, officially from the trash folks, and they were proactive in doing it. I just never connected the two things as one being the the solution to a problem that didn't occur until much later. Um, the Board of Health has been extremely busy, um, but um, I'm I'm going to report on. Good news that um, we have uh, a grant has been approved for $35,310, and um, our, our um, health director is very busy getting a lot of grants. She's applied for another one again today. Uh, this particular one, we do have mosquito spraying now, but it is not extremely effective. They just spray the town wherever they're told to spray. This uh, pays for testing. I, I provided you with a copy of the um, article that sort of describes what they will be doing. Again, it's another collaborative um, measure with maybe three or four other communities. So uh, um, kudos to Amy for um, the hard work that she's doing. She's, uh, she's pretty on the ball. Moving on to Board of Assessors. First on the agenda, senior work off abatement report. This report is just uh, con uh, containing the senior work off abatement participants. It is considered an abatement. Okay. And that is what was abated from their tax bill for working um, from the volunteer program. I'm sure those people are happy that they did a little work for the town and yes. getting money off of their tax bill. Absolutely. It's a nice advantage. The next report you should have is a real estate exemption report for the month of December. Okay. And that should be probably one of, uh, that's the second, no, that would be the first full month of doing our. These are the exemptions, exemptions. We, we have granted for uh, seniors, for veterans, and for people who are blind. Mm -hmm. The board also talks new homes and solar additions. So these are building permits through the month of November. Uh, okay. Year to date, we now have 21 new homes. Mm -hmm. In looking at last year, by the end of December, we had 24 new homes. So I would say we're staying pretty consistent from yes. last year to this year. Um, year to date, we have 80 new solar projects. Uh, 80. 80. Last year, in total, we had 110. Now it's time for our weekly segment, Library Learning, where we let you know about upcoming library events. We're calling all community members to join local author Christina Us at the library's popular workshop, Writer's Group. Us started her writing career as a successful freelance writer to now publishing a children's book, The Adventures of a Girl Called Bicycle. Just this week, I was sending back um, a round of edits to my publisher. So my book, The Adventures of a Girl Called Bicycle, which is a children's book for ages 8 to 12, is coming out in January 2018. And so I'm in the midst of working on it now, learning the whole process. Um, my publisher basically is doing edits. They send it to me. I send them back. They're getting the illustrator ready. They're getting the cover ready. And so hopefully in a few months, I'll be seeing something that looks more like a book and less like a bunch of pages <laughs> with a bunch of scribbles on them. The Adventures of a Girl Called Bicycle is a story of a girl who rides her bike from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco, and she's on her way to try to make her first true friend. And along the way, she meets the most amazing characters, some of whom are real people. Uh, it's hard to believe that some of the truth in my book is stranger than the fiction. And she, uh, along the way, just learns about the beauty of our country, the kindness of the people who live in it, and just that there are surprises around every turn. Not only is us in the publishing process, but she's already started writing her second book. Its working title is Eric Versus Everything, about a boy whose family does not understand that he's afraid of a lot of things because his family is a bunch of Vikings. But they live in Connecticut in modern day, and 
it's about him trying to get his family to understand him, and they just don't. <laughs> so the adventures of Eric, the nine-year-old Viking. Um, so working on that has been so much fun, and I can't wait to show it to my editor once she's done with the book we're working on now. Getting back to the library's program, Writers Group is a monthly two-hour drop-in workshop for writers of all levels. The class is recommended for ages 14 and older. So this writing class that I'm doing is um, taking over from Emily Savin, who started the class, and it's a once a month class, and I've done it with her. And uh, what the class offers and what I hope to continue to offer is a safe place to write. That when you come there, you know that whatever you write is gonna be held by all the other people in the room with respect, and we're gonna tell you all the things we like about it because people get enough criticism about their writing in school and a lot of people carry that around like, oh, I'm not a good writer and people are gonna mark up my page. And our writing group is the opposite. You know when you get there, you're gonna hear what's strong about your writing, what's good about your writing, and you're gonna walk out of there feeling confident. You come in just with a blank notebook or sheet of paper and uh, the facilitator, who's me, will give you writing prompts and we all write about the same thing. So for example, we had a few weeks ago the word box. Just, and everybody envisions for a minute like box, like what do I wanna write about for a box? And we write for 10 minutes and then we all go around and share if we're comfortable sharing and we all give our responses of what's strong about the piece of writing. So we have different prompts and we write for a short time and then we do our responses. So uh, I wanted people to know you don't have to bring writing from home. You just bring a pencil and your imagination and that's all you need. Get your pencils and paper ready for the next upcoming date in February. Us will also be offering support after class for those who want to take their writing to the next step. I'm going to have an email list um, that anybody who wants to sign up can be on and they can, they'll all have my email. So yeah, outside of class, they're more than welcome to ask about uh, anything I can help with with getting published in newspapers, magazines, or maybe even trying to get a book published. Um, and maybe at some point we'll do a workshop that will be specifically about, so you want to be a professional writer. But this writing group is just going to be about having fun and kind of letting your writing spirit free. We'll keep you posted when Us's book is available for pre-purchase. To learn more about Us, visit her website at christinaus.com. We'll end tonight with a public service announcement. Open burning season begins January 15th and ends May 1st. Open burning is for those who want to clean up their yard of any brush or debris. However, to take part, there are certain rules homeowners must follow. Fire Lieutenant Chris Beecher explains how residents can get started. It's a day-by-day -day basis determined by the state and the uh, fire chief here in town. You have to call, find out if burning is allowed that day. Uh, it's based on a couple factors. If it's acceptable through uh, wind conditions, through if the if its conditions are too dry, um, and as well as the fire chief will also make a final determination based on local uh, events. Uh, we, we don't allow it to be uh, piles of leaves anything like that, tree limbs, stumps, tires, none of that is allowed. It's all just basically for, for just small trimmings within your yard. Uh, permits are available at the fire station. So they're $5 as they have been in years past. For more information on open burning, you can call the fire department or review the requirements on the town's website. Well, that will do it for this edition of LCAT News Update. Be sure to stay connected with us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at LCAT 01028. And don't forget to watch us on cable channels 191, 192, and 193. For cable channel times, make sure to check out our LCAP program guide. Guides are available at the Town Hall, Library, Senior Center, and through our website at eastlongmeadowma.gov. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Green. Thanks for watching. See you next week.